Hi everyone, Gary here from Gun Australia, and hey, we have a special guest all the way from Germany. We have Christian from Gun Hello. himself, and uh, Christian is an expert at his moisture meters and moisture detection. So we're going to be talking about our Restorers kit now. This has our uh, BLA Plus, and also has our uh, BRU and uh, Uni uh, Eleven. And uh, we're going to be talking about those meters and their, all their attachments. Okay. So let's start with the easier one first, I feel. <laughs> the, the, the Uni 11, BL Uni 11. Okay, BL Uni 11. Okay, is a... It's a uh, moisture meter that you can use with um, a so-called um, ball probe, which is the B55BL, for example. That's what you can use on building materials. You can, you can just show you how to turn it on. Yes, you turn it on, then you connect probe. I'm oh, sorry. Okay, and then you could, in theory, you could take a measurement, but we do not have it on concrete right now. But, but you can also you can also connect that up. There's another cable here to join. You can also connect that up to a telescopic pole to go up into ceilings and so forth. Yes, it's true. Yeah. Okay, so it's good so, to have that attachment sometimes to that's separate to the meter rather than when you have the meter itself um, with the, the dielectric ball meter on top. Okay, what, what you can do with this is you can um, check uh, building materials with a relative scale, uh, which is indicated by this small zero, um, meaning that you have a scale from zero to roughly 180, 190, depending. Um, and you will be able to see whether there are differences in moisture content on a wall, a ceiling, or whatever you're measuring. Um, what you can also do is you um, go to a site, um, check an unaffected area, or a dry area, um, and you will see what value this um, meter will indicate. And you can take this as a reference point for further, further measurements um, in that place. Um, and you will see whether the moisture content um, is more or less in certain areas, so we will be able to identify critical spots or areas. Um, what you can also do um, by pressing the arrow down button is that you can go away from the um, relative scale. Um, zero flashes now can be changed, and we've got um, certain um, conversion uh, settings in there so you can select different right. um, building materials and you will receive a reading percentage so like the, the you've got you know cement screen and you've got volume mass settings the cement screen and lime mortar and cement mortar and concrete and mixed plaster and gypsum plaster and so forth and you've also got the cm the calcium carbide equivalent setting the cm setting for gypsum plaster lime mortar cement mortar mixed plaster uh, concrete so forth so one is a, a weight percentage um, and one is a CM percentage. So briefly talk a little bit about uh, weight percentage for me. Uh, weight percentage uh, means that it is the, or that, that it relates to the dry mass of the material. Um, my example I always, always give is a block of concrete that weighs a total uh, that weighs 1,100 kilograms in total. That means with um, some moisture content. And if you um, measure 10% moisture content, for example, with this block, it would mean that you will have um, 100 kilos of water and 1,000 kilos of um, concrete, because that would be the, the relation. 1,000 kilos of pure material and 10% um, of that is 100 kilos, so you've got 100 kilos of um, water in a block of 1,100 kilos in total. Um, of course, that's just 
an example, but that's the way it would work. Okay, so we have all those non-invasive settings there. Mm -hmm. And um, we've also got um, a space to put our, our grommeter. Yeah, that's the, um, that's the TFBL, uh, TFIR we call it, TFRBL. So you just use the same sockets. Okay. Turn on the meter again. So now it will, so you press the measuring button, it will take about two or three seconds and you've got ah, your okay. reading. Three seconds to change from whatever it was from before. Yeah, it could, it could be four sometimes, but um, just be a little bit patient. patient. Um, uh, something else that is to be considered is that the cable fits, uh, is, is put into the sockets uh, quite firmly, not too firm, otherwise you might break um, the plug, but it, it really fits uh, Snug. uh, snugly. So yeah, exactly, that's it. And uh, then you can go ahead, take your measurement, um, I'm sorry, reflections. Okay, like this, you can see it. Um, you can change settings here as well. In this case, now we've got relative humidity, that's our age, temperature, meaning air temperature, and we've got infrared, IR means infrared, so we've got, we are measuring um, a surface temperature at the and same if you're time. Checking, if you're checking building materials, make sure it's on 95, um, the setting for because you know, most people get in there and change it and then they go, oh, hang on, they'll check their surface, they'll check their skin and they go, why am I only 30 degrees? Or, you know, because they've got it set on the wrong reflection, the wrong emission reflection setting. Yes. So they really need to double check the, the manual on whatever material they're checking to mm. make sure that it's the right emission reflection setting. That's especially important um, when it comes to glass or metal because those are those, those shiny surfaces um, uh, really have a different emission factor. Um, what you can do on these, um, the kit comes with these uh, stickers as well. They've got an emission factor of 95. Um, so you will be able to put one of these on uh, that surface and then we'll be able to measure um, the surface temperature there. Oh, awesome. Hey, great idea. Okay, so. Yeah. So we can do, we can check our relative humidity. We can check our temperature. We can check our dew point. Mm -hmm. Let's run through some of the settings we have. We can, okay, here we are again. Infrared. Um, relative got, humidity, temperature, temperature, yes. Relative humidity, temperature, dew point, as you said. We've got, um, UGL means EMC, meaning equilibrium moisture content. Um, so if you have a piece of wood, or if you, um, let's put it the other way around, if you've got some conditions um, consisting of relative humidity and temperature, and you imagine you put a piece of timber in there for a certain period of time, for a long, long, long period of time, um, this piece of timber will finally end up with a certain moisture content, which is defined by relative humidity and temperature. And you will see this final state of that piece of timber um, expressed in UGL or in EMC moisture content. So if you okay. let's just check or let's just have a quick example. If we let's take a measurement exactly now it's so that piece of wood in with these conditions 33.9% and 21.8 degrees would end up with 6.7% moisture content. So that would be um, uh, yeah, that piece of timber. And so you could, for example, um, decide whether the ambient conditions are okay to store timber in there or if, if it's too dry or too wet, okay. too humid. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Okay, so then, then you can also put a hygrometer in the other section, can't you? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. So what, what would be the benefits of doing a hygrometer in the other section? Because you can switch between hygrometer and maybe your, your building your, your building readings with your dielectric ball meter? Um, that's a um, good question. That's a good question. Let's just, let's just try. I need a, okay, I've got this one.
Now let's see. We've got both connected. No, it will it will show um, relative humidity and temperature. It will not show the ball meter in that case. Okay. Okay. No, that one dominates, so to speak. But what you can the the I think the or the reason is that we've got several or we've got different um, versions of these um, small hygrometers um, depending on the um, requirements. Um, this one here, I'm not sure. Perhaps you can see it uh, quite. Um, this is just a small, yeah, small metal cage around the sensor. Um, we've got two other variants having um, um, one has a metal filter grid, the other one has a Teflon foam um, insert. Um, that makes sense if you measure in very dusty environments um, where it's very, very dirty and you don't want the sensor to get clogged um, because that will happen finally. Um, the, the advantage of this one using only the, the metal cage is that it, it reacts much, much quicker there to um, changes in temperature and relative humidity. It adapts more quickly than the other ones. It's merely a question of protection and um, time in that case. So that's the main difference between those three. Okay. So what other attachments can we put onto the actual meter? We have some um, surface surface temperature. Yes, you can use a contact uh, sensor, contact probe for um, surface temperature measurements. So what's the benefit of using a temperature sensor rather than a laser? It's a little bit more accurate. Um, in the end, it might be more accurate because you will really measure in a defined uh, or in a def clearly defined place. If you put that on on a surface, um, you will definitely measure in this very um, place. The uh, disadvantage is, of course, you will have to um, touch the material. You'll have to go close enough. Um, in theory, you will also um, uh, how can I put this? Um, the the sensor surface will um, reduce um, the the actual temperature of the um, of the surface, not by much, but as I said, in theory, that's the case. So I feel um, if you're going to be going to be the floors and you want to be very accurate. Um, sorry, I'm sorry, I didn't understand you. I didn't understand you. <laughs> Sorry, when you're when you're checking timber floors, hardwood timber floors, yeah. to be the most accurate with your with your moisture meter to take the mm -hmm. you need to take your surface temperature. Yes. I feel using a temperature sensor can be a lot more accurate um, when you're touching the material to get that perfect accurate because one percent on a timber floor can be from can be enough to make the floor cut, especially mm -hmm. a hardwood floor. So being very accurate on the hardwood floors, I think a temperature sensor is a little bit more accurate. It is, yes. Yeah, you can say so. Um, the advantage of the, the infrared is, of course, that you can use it quickly in different places. You don't have to wait for the sensor to adapt. Um, you can do it from a distance. Of course, you will always have to be aware of the fact that um, the measuring um, spots um, will be wider than um, if you are standing only five centimeters away, of course. Um, but for quick assessments, the infrared is great. Okay. You can do it quickly. You can also do it from a distance. You can measure in corners um, just, just to get a quick overview and just to get a rough idea of what temperatures are. Um, so that's that's the real advantage of it. And we've got some of this paste now. I'm not going to try to pronounce the first word, <laughs> but it's in a it's in a language I don't understand. But I know the last word's paste. But uh, my understanding is this this is for if you don't have to put on the 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 tip of the actual um, surface sensor to get a flat. If you don't have a flat surface, exactly. If you've got a rough surface, you will use this to fill fill the gaps. And then you will have a good uh, thermal connection between the sensor and the surface, and then you will get a good uh, result. Also, we have a temperature sensor that has a spike on the end. What do you mainly use this one for? Um, mainly on on rather soft materials. For example, if you if you want to go into say insulation materials, for example. 
that would be possible to use it for this. Um, other some bulk materials if you need to. Um, you could even use it in uh, liquids, but you, of course you should not immerse the the handle. Um, okay, okay. So that can be good for insulated walls or something like that. Example, yes. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Fantastic. Okay. So also um, with the the Uni 11, we've got the aspect of adding a in-depth hygrometer. Um, mm -hmm. We have the, the normal uh, mm -hmm. long in-depth hygrometers, and we also have the flexible ones, the flexible hygrometers. So um, looking at the filter side of things on the hygrometers, looks like they've got a really nice filter here because mm -hmm. you're going to be putting these into, you know, um, walls or bricks or plaster yes. or... You know, you're putting them into a cavity, so you want to protect your hygrometer by having that nice filtration there. Mm -hmm. So exactly, um, that's that's what I was that's what I was talking about before. Um, it'll take a little bit longer to adapt, but um, it'll protect your sensor. And of okay. course, using this, using this, you could also um, go behind a kind of behind a cupboard or something like that if you've got any furniture that's too heavy, or if you just want to to be uh, fast, you can. Um, you can bend this and then you can go behind that, that piece could, of furniture. That could, that, could, that could tell your dew point then. Your surface dew point is very important behind furniture. It could be a different dew point to what it is in the air. Mm -hmm. So, And with that also, um, so my, my understanding of the procedure, if I had a block, a concrete block wall and I wanted to check the block wall and I wanted to go a little bit deeper than, say, you know, a, a non-invasive dielectric meter, if I want to go a little bit deeper, I could uh, uh, a drill a hole at least 50% depth of that and, you know, put some nice tape over it and leave it for 24 hours. And, then, yes. you know, um, what are we size here? What does this look like, 5 mil? So we need something as – is that a 5 mil? Uh, that's the, that's the non-flexible one, is it? Yes. Um, should be – I think it's 5. Yeah, I think no, it's now, five. You've caught, now you've caught me. I don't know it. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. But I think we can look that up. But I think it's five mil. So you just need to go normally one mil, mil uh, bigger with your drill bit. Sorry, six mil drill mm. bit. Um, clean out your hole. Um, go fifty percent depth. Good point. And then and then and then put the tape over. Leave it twenty four hours. Come back and put the hygrometer in. Leave it that little bit of time, up to about twenty minutes to 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 really equalize in there, or ten, 10 mm. to twenty minutes to equalize in there. And then you can get a hygrometer reading. Now, usually, if your hygrometer reading is seventy-five percent and your relative and your temperature is ambient, now ambient is is going to be a normal temperature. But if it's seventy-five percent uh, relative humidity at ambient, it's going to be in concrete materials. It's going to be the two percent. So it can give you a another reading. Um, my aspect of checking a wall inside of walls. I would love to go multiple ways. You know, you are non-invasive and an invasive ways. I like to go multiple ways. Um, we will show you and uh, one of our other kits. Um, there is another way, but uh, this is great for your hygrometer to go into that uh, the wall, the wall cavity. Mm -hmm. And with the um, with the BL Uni 11, you can even select several um, building materials using this um, hygrometer. Um, okay. So if you, if you are using it in that cavity or in, in that uh, pre-drilled hole, you will even, even be able to select uh, different building materials to get a um, reading in percentage right away. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, that is unreal. I didn't know that. Oh, wow, I'm learning stuff tonight too. This is fantastic. So you can get a moisture content? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I've never heard of that. Oh my God, this is great. I'm getting excited. Um, so with your hygrometer, you can get a moisture content of that. Can you just show us on the screen how that how that looks? Um, okay. I'll, so that's that's what we have. It says percentage. You've got temperature, of course, because temperature is still there. Um, and you've got this um, setting, which I don't know by heart at the moment, but and then you just measure and you've got a... Four percent. Content of four percent, with these conditions at the moment. So of oh course, my it's god, that is good. unreal. So we can do it that way, or we can convert it from a relative humidity. Yes. Um, as well. 
That is unreal. That is so much faster. We've got instant reading, instant number. Yes, I'm going to and, tell you now, on, I don't know anyone, uh, other companies that do that. I don't know any companies that do this. And and the advantages, of course, or, or you could, depending on what's what suits your requirements better, sometimes the rel relative reading might be better if, it's, if it shows differences better. That uh, refers to the ball meter, but also to these. So, so you can you can choose. It's, it's it's up to you. What you can do both. Yes. And then you can see if you if it's all. Um, for example, if you already check it, uh, if you are about to check um, differences over time, perhaps um, the uh, percentage scale is not that um, expressive. But if you if you check if you um, check um, differences in relative humidity and, and you had say 80% and it changes to 75, 80%. Uh, so then you will see the um, the progress perhaps uh, in a better way than just uh, using the um, uh, percentage reading. Yeah, that's fantastic. You've got some options. We will show you some options later on, but you've also got the, these uh, uh, stainless, stainless brush pins, which when you um, put them in your holes, you obviously have to go two holes in an unaffected area and two holes in an affected area. You're getting a, a relative reading. It's get a conductivity on the brush itself, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but not, not with a BL Uni 11? No, no. We're going to be showing that. But that's just another way of checking our in-depth wall. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you can add procedures and, and get, get a, an entire picture of... Um... Options. I love it. Options. Yes. Okay. Now let's work onto this this bad boy, the BLA Plus. So this mm -hmm. is uh, fairly new to um, the gun uh, as a moisture meter. How long has this been out now? Has it been out a few years? Um? How many years has it been out now? How many years has it been out of this meter? Um. I'm not quite sure. I think it's three, perhaps. Three, yeah. Four years, perhaps. Yeah, I knew it was fairly new. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's run through this meter. Okay. This one is um, quite special because it combines two um, ways of measuring moisture content in wood. Um, you know, um, we've already talked about those um, pin probes, pin type probes, hammer probes, all that. You can do it with this meter as well. You can also do um, non-invasive measurements with this sensor on the back. Um, so it's got different, different settings for different types um, of timber. Um, but what you can also do, um, the, the list of wood species for um, capacitive that means non-invasive uh, measurement is limited. Um, but in such a case, you could do a uh, resistance measurement first, meaning using a hammer probe or something like that. And then you can virtually tell the meter to um, adapt itself to that value that you've measured with the um, hammer probe. Okay. That's cool. That's, that's the, I think that's the, the major um, advantage of this one. We call Sweet. it rest cap. It's, which is a, a combination. Could we of demonstrate that? Is that okay? To, could we could we demonstrate that? Yes, yes, yes. We could. We could. I, I can just show you. I'm, I'm not sure if we can do it with a piece of timber. I'll, I might try, but um, well, I have a piece yeah, of timber here. I can I can help with. Okay. Oh, so hammer probe into the timber. I'll just use some. I'll just use some um, non-invasive. Um, uh, uh, Non-insulated pins, sorry. Yeah, that's that's all right. That doesn't matter for demonstration. That's perfectly okay. Place my pins in here. Place my okay. Okay. On that. Okay, and now, now what you're going to do is. Um, I'll just go back because I've, I've done it in secret. Um, oh, I gotta get it. I gotta get it at it. I gotta get it into English. Uh, I'll just go back. Um, press the arrow down button. Yeah, it's speecher, isn't it? Um, no, no, that's the timber. You can Sorry. go. You can go up once. That that that's the that's the mm -hmm. easiest way to get there. 
Oh, I'm afraid you won't be. You can't you can't read it probably, but um, yeah. um, use the use the arrow buttons until you reach RAS cap. Oh yeah, but I'm just going to get it out of. How do I get it into English? Oh, you've got. Have you got the the German version? Uh. Okay, then just uh, use the arrow buttons until you get this arrow back. There's an arrow back uh, symbol. It looks yes. like this. Yes. Okay. Uh, then one down again. It, must, it should be Einstellungen, meaning settings in English. Ah, oh, yes. There we go. And then you have, um, then you go down, 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 or probably go up. If you go up and then up again, um, language should be Sprache. I suppose. S B R A C H E. Yeah, gotcha. Gotcha. Like this. Gotcha. Okay, we're in. We're English. Okay. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. So I'm in now, and then I'm going to. I've got it set on twenty degrees. Okay, so, just um, then go down to the uh, res cap. Yeah, you go, go to res cap. I'm sorry. Um, no, I'm called in the settings section. Okay, I'll go back. Okay, now let's go either all the way down or one button up, and then we'll oh, yeah. have right. res cap. Yeah, press the res cap. Yes. Yes. Okay. Then we can choose um, what what moisture, uh, what what wood species we have. So if it's, I don't know what it is. Looks like a, a um, pine. Pine. Then it should be three. So we'll select three. Confirm this by pressing the measuring button once again. Now it says start res, meaning resistive, i.e. hammer you, probe. You really got to know the type of timber that you think it might be. Whether it's a hardwood yes, or soft. Wood. Yes. So yes, you've got that, one. That you've got one to seven. So you've got. Well, if you think it's a hardwood, it's going to be closer to one, is it, or is it closer to seven? Mm, it's 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 always a bit difficult because it depends on the um, specific uh, electrical um, resistivity of that timber type. So if it if it's completely unknown, um, and this is something that came up recently here as well. Um, our technicians told me that. Six um, is always a good um, average uh, setting it, to, it to, capture, not, not invasive, to capture yeah. as much as possible. Okay. So, you could, so you've got so you confirmed could, value at 11.9. Okay. Then, you, yeah, when, when, when there's a stable value, just confirm this. Yes. And then, it will yes. and then it will tell you to put the device on that measurement spot, meaning you ah. have to, you have to remove... Put the cable um, or the, the probe and the cable. Yes. And put it in that, that spot. spot and then press, so press the measurement button. Ideally, you would remove the um, electrode, the, the probe, because um, the metal will also have an impact on the measurement. Okay. Pop in there. Okay. Uh, now it says put device on the measurement point and confirm. So then you will confirm. Now, in my case, it, that was quite quick because there was nothing to. Measure yeah. and now and it should um, staying it approaches the the setting that's um, gotcha. gotcha. Okay, and then you've got a setting which you can use for non-invasive measurements with that okay. um, type of timber. So the other way that I could do it is if I was using the red cap, I could go through to the settings and go through. Uh, when I go to settings, I'll go to. Um, hang on, bear with me. So when I go to settings, it's I go wood to type. wood type, mm -hmm. yes. And then what I could do is go, uh, so we've got different wood types here. So we've got normal uh, wood type and then we've got thin. So thin is normally up to a certain, is it 25 mil? 20, 20. 20 mil. say it's 20. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what's also not what's also important is um, you've got also got an option that you can't see it, uh, but it's unplaned, meaning rough um, timber just uh, sawn, um, 
not not planned, yes. uh, no nothing. Yes. Because yes. usually we recommend having a smooth surface, so there won't be any air um, underneath the sensor, which might affect your measurements. Oh, so that's a that's a great idea. Is, the, better, the smoother it is, the better it is. But um, our technicians found a way to simulate this, um, and so you've got this option to um, to improve your reading. Okay, okay. So if I want to do if I want to do with the settings, um, uh, bear with me. So let's just say I get there and I want to fine tune it. Sorry, I got fat fingers. If I want to fine tune. So what I can do is if I go to an unaffected area, and I go, okay, the unaffected area, it really, this timber should read 12 in this area. And then what I do is I can set it, say, let's say I've just set it to six right now, and I agree on six. Right, I go back to our wood, and then I put it on here and take my reading. And if it reads 10.2, if I go, oh, that's a bit low, I can adjust it until it actually reads 12. And then I go, well, that's my reading. So then it'll set my specific gravity number, whatever that might be. So in this case, it's saying, it's six, it's saying 10.2. If I go in here and go back to my settings, and I go back to my fine tuning, mm -hmm. And I go down, I go down to say four and a half, or let's say five in this aspect, because I was on six. I'll change it to five, actually 4.8. Now it's saying 12.9. So it's going to be around about the 5.3 mark. The six was a little bit too high. Then I can adjust it. Once I adjust it to 5.3 and read in 12% in a known dry area, then I can go around to every other area and it's set. Or I have to take a hammer probe reading and use my res cap um, setting to find out, you know, to set my specific gravity. That's what that's what I was going going to say because um, you you virtually did what what the res cap mode does after taking that measurement with a hammer probe. Um, you tried on the one side and the, on the other side, then, then you went to and fro um, to find the, um, the value, uh, the moisture content value that you, that you assumed it should have. Um, and with a rest cap, you just measure it, um, provided you are able and allowed to um, leave some holes in the wood, of course. Um, that might also be critical. Um, and what and what yeah. do you recommend? The, are you recommending the the hammer probe to go along the grain or across the grain? Uh, we say across because you might always be unlucky and hit a fiber that's um, uh, for some reason that that has more um, water in it than others, and you, then you will just hit this fiber. Um, if you do it across, um, you'll uh, minimize the risk of um, having. Uh, um, or, or hitting an, an irregular spot, so to speak. Okay, because our always understanding was to go along the grain to get the along the capillaries, but you're saying across the grain can be important too. Yeah, so you so we'll cover a wider a wider um, a wider, wider area. space or more vari variety of the wood. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Okay, and in the middle in the middle of the wood, never on the edge. Okay. Yes. Yes. That would be, well, but. Yeah, yeah, it will be more representative than okay. the edge because edges, edges always, or oh, the the usual um, process is that edges um, dry out faster than than the than the middle or the center. So um, yeah, that might be more representative. And, and then you've got uh, batches and average. 
yeah, you you always you also have a possibility to um, if you if you have to measure a lot or these batches, you could um, you can define a batch um, any way you want. For example, it might be a house, a certain house, a certain um, or a certain uh, room, a certain um, uh, a certain piece of timber in that room. Say say the the floor or something like that. If you if you do uh, measurements over time, then that might be useful. Okay. So you can put those into batches, and you can see measurement one was um, a higher content, higher moisture content than measurement two. Measurement three, you've got those um, the time or, or the dates when you were there when you checked those, so you can have a comparison over time. And when you've got the wood type, um, when you've got the, the with the hammer probe in, you've got the you've got a fine tune as well. No, no, the, the hammer probe is straightforward, as is the BLH40, so you can select seven groups. Um, that's it. The fine tuning is ex exclusively for the capacitive mode. Okay, oh, awesome. So that's with, the other scale. Yes. So with that, um, and and the the uh, the adjustment. What about the adjustment? That's only for the non-invasive as well. The adjustment setting. Um, no adjustment is is uh, some kind of uh, calibration um, setting, which, if I'm not mistaken, is um, is done um, just if, if there's any reason um, for you to doubt your readings, and um, so there's that's that's nothing you use every day. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So with this, you've got with this restorer's kit, we've got the uh, awesome. Hammer probe. I really love this hammer probe. I really love how strong it is, and how you can actually get a spanner, a, a spanner in here to tighten if you really want to tighten everything in here to make it nice and tight. Because the the pins feel really tight with this hammer probe. I do like that. It's a, it's got to be plastic, but it seems like the plastic is very very hard. We had a, a previous version that was um, more prone to breaking than this, so. Um... Yeah, we really did some research on that, on the shape, on the material, all that. So we really um, put some effort into to make it as, as resistant as possible. Yes, and always hammer probe in and then connect your cables. Yes. And when you, and when you are removing your cables, just never pull the cable. Always mm -hmm. twist and just twist it out like so. Because these are the first things that are going to wear, but I do like that you can just replace the cable if uh, there is a, a, a problem. Um, that's probably one of the first things to go. You do get a nice handheld pin probe that you've got uh, all these different uh, uninsulated pins for your different building materials. And then you've got, you get, uh, you know, your insulated pins. The insulated pins means so you've got your blue or your green. Where, where it's a different color, it doesn't pick up any readings. So it's only picking up at the tip. So you, you know, when you're hammer probing in, you're getting the different of the board, the middle of the board, and the top of the board. Yeah. So the last thing is these little foam sensors that we have here that we put on the end of the. Um, if I can get one open. Where's one I prepared earlier? Here we go. So we just screw these on. And when you push hard down on timber, it's just going to get me a relative scale, correct? No, no, you will be able to. You can just select the timber species that you have, and that's it. Oh, and you've got a percentage. But it only yes. does three to four mil or three mil. Yeah, two, we say two or three. It always depends on circumstances, but uh, two or three is the reliable. Um, the reliable um, depth, I'd say. Okay, that's awesome. Okay, well, I think that's... Uh, that's the and you could also use kit. this. I oh, know, not with that one, sorry. <laughs> okay. So that's uh, the Restorers kit. Um, mm -hmm. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.